What's up, everybody? Welcome back to World on Drugs. I'm your host, Steve Fury. You know me. You probably actually know me if you're listening to this. Um, this week, we got a great show, guys. We got my buddy Nick Aragon. Talk about him a little bit more. He's a stand-up comedian, one of my best buds. But even more important, we're talking about the Yakuza. I know what you're thinking. Steve, I've heard of the Yakuza. I know about the Yakuza. You probably don't. And they were harder to research than I thought, but we have a really great episode. Um, what more can I say, man? This episode was researched by Ryan Holhauser. Hopefully he comes back. Haven't heard from him for a while. If you want to be a researcher, hit me up, baby. We got to have a spot open. Hopefully Ryan comes back. Um, this guest is Nick Aragon. Nick and I, um, we pretty much started comedy together in Sacramento. I know him from Sacramento. He's a Stockton kid. Uh, when I first started stand-up, he was in two years, and I thought he was the bee's knees. I thought he was the coolest guy around. I wanted to be a friend of his. Uh, I was I was scared to talk to him. Um, when I go to open mics, I just kind of stayed in the back. And then over the years, we became good friends. And having him in LA has been a blessing. He's a really great comic. I've probably had him on every show I've ever had. Um, for future shows, I'll definitely have him open for me. If you have a chance to check him out, his Instagram's at Instaragon. He's one of the funniest guys out there. Uh, we have a great chemistry. This is a great episode. I really, really think you guys will like it. Other than that, man, what did I do this last week? It was my birthday, officially 32. What's up? Uh, did that whole toast for my birthday thing. A lot of you guys participated want to say thank you i got very drunk uh drunker than i've been in quite a long time went to 27 beers thank you very much still alive took 48 hours to recover ate a full pizza and might have thrown it up but you know that's just semantics other than that guys you know we have a great uh, what else? shit what else i've been doing nothing much man just still doing this COVID thing my uh Dates are picking up. This Saturday, I will be in San Diego at American Comedy Company. So if you are there, please come out. Or if you know someone in San Diego, tell them to come to my show on the 23rd at 8 p.m. Um, now I'm starting to headline clubs. And being a guy that no one gives a fuck about, but people only put on their clubs because I'm very funny, What it finally matters how many tickets I sell. Uh, most of my life, if you've known me, I've always given away free tickets or you go, Hey, do I need friends to come to this show? And I normally said, no, I don't give a fuck. Stop asking me dumbass questions. But in this case I do. So if you know anyone in San Diego, please have them buy tickets to the American Comedy Co. on the 23rd of April. Also got a bunch of shows coming up, man. Check out my website or most likely my Instagram. You probably follow me anyway. It's going to be great. You know, man, this, uh. This COVID's got, starting to look better, man. The world's coming back. Got a lot of things in the works. Failed an audition this week. That felt good. Um, get, been getting a lot more auditions. Auditions are fun if you've never done them. Because what you have to do is you have to read and memorize about, oh, I don't know, one to eight pages of materials. And read probably a hundred page uh, script. And then you have to memorize it. And then you have to say it clearly and do well. And then you say it. And then you send it in. And you never hear anything. If you did good or bad or anything. Uh, if you did good, you get a callback. I was getting a lot of callbacks before uh, the world ended. Uh, I've been burping a lot, slamming Michelobes. We drank a few, uh, few tall boys of Pacifico on this one. You're going to hear us uh, be a little gassy. But I got to say, uh, Nick's chemistry with me is one of the best uh, of anyone I know. Uh, we riff off each other a lot, and it's a really great episode. Uh, I think you guys are going to love it. I enjoyed it. I learned a lot about the Yakuza. Um, and next week, we got another great episode, man. I'm going to keep it secret because it's a gang I've never even heard about. I had some deep research trying to find some stuff. You know, because look, listen, listen. We did the Yakuza. We did Vincent Gigante. These are people you can, you've you probably heard of. And that's not really what we're trying to do. But this next group, I bet you never have. And they are insane. But nonetheless, I mean, this podcast in and of itself is very good. I think we get into some crimes that no one's talked about. I bet we, uh, we tell you how the Yakuza got their name. Bet you never knew that. And honestly, it's a riff city with me and Nick. Uh... We laugh the whole time. We have a great time. Enjoy the show. Um, comment on uh, Apple Podcasts. Share this with your friends. It's growing slowly. I appreciate everyone listening. I appreciate everyone watching. Um, hope to see you guys at a show soon. Hope you guys see you guys in person now that uh, COVID's done. And uh, 
Enjoy the show, guys. Bye. Hey, Aragon, what's up, buddy? I just gave you a hell of a fucking uh, intro. I do that before. Yeah, 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 yeah. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. It's, yeah. Uh, one of the best ones I've ever gotten. You know, it took time. It takes years to write these. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, first day I met you, I started a file on my phone. Uh-huh, um, uh-huh. Just started putting every little slight you ever did against me. Uh-huh. That file, that went through six iPhones. Six iPhones. <laughs> six iPhones. Went to an Android at once. Uh-huh, not easy uh-huh, to cross uh-huh. over. Tried to put it into a BlackBerry. Did not work out. <laughs> Whew, there's another Nick Aragon out there. Really, he got a nasty email because of that BlackBerry. It was not good for him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And let me tell you, the guys on the Nokia, I snaked a very sexual uh, image. Okay, <laughs> Nick, what we're doing today, we're doing the Yakuza. So when I first started checking these guys out, I thought I could get a better um, understanding of who they are and like the main people. But Yakuza is actually just kind of a word for mafia. It's not really like a gang like the Crips or something. It's just a broad term. So, just to start us out, get everybody on tour. Yakuza, also known as the Boryu Kudan or the Gokuda, are Japanese gangsters, members of what are formerly called the Boryu Kudan. These are all these are all uh, things that Street Fighter characters shout out <laughs> before they throw fireballs, spinning kicks. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I feel like I've played... Yeah. <laughs> Boryo Kudan! Boryo Kuda! <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to do Japanese uh, mm-hmm. um, impersonations, and mm-hmm. I've been battling that this whole time. Yeah, I would I would say the greater sin is insulting gangs. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I would be more worried about that than like... Uh, These guys? Yeah. Yeah, just generally. I call a few people out mm-hmm. by name. They can come and get me. Please don't, guys. Dude. They're actually kind of old. So it's like a <laughs> mafia-like criminal ex- organization. In Japan and elsewhere, especially in the West, the term Yakuza can be used to refer to individual gangsters or criminals as well as organized groups and Japanese organized crime in general. Yakuza adopt samurai-like rituals and often bear elaborate body tattoos. They engage, they engage in extortion, blackmail, smuggling, prostitution, drug trafficking, gambling, loan sharking, day labor contracting... <laughs> That was the weird uh, one, wasn't uh-huh, it? Uh huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, that guy. He killed like six dudes, but he's actually the foreman for the building <laughs> up the street. He's kind of. You're gonna nice. be the murderer. Uh-huh. You're gonna be the th- drug dealer. <laughs> yeah. You're Mason. Yeah, yeah. These, it's funny to think that these guys are also just the guys like in hard hats, like cat calling girls walking by. <laughs> They just like do that guy will cut your throat, but also he's just like, hey baby, hey come back here, hey, sweet tits. He just yeah. has like a switchblade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and other rackets. They also control a lot of restaurants, bars, tra- uh, trucking companies, talent agencies, taxi talent, fleet. Talent agencies. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are getting in there. They, uh-huh. they have this. She's this great one. I don't, <clears throat> since I already know a lot of the information, it's kind of hard when I read it early because uh-huh. I want to give tidbits. But uh, I'll just kind of let it go. Isn't it? Later. Isn't that maybe I'm drifting into that now? But isn't that part of how? gangs and stuff are able to exist after a certain point because they start legitimizing yeah they start being a part of legitimate businesses that they become part of the woods so to speak yeah and then they get so entrenched that it's hard to get rid of them yeah exactly so nick the yakuza what do you think you already know about them um i think that they are uh, uh like I always thought like they had weird rules like it's like they have a bunch of tattoos which means that no one else is allowed to have tattoos yeah, I always felt like if you had tattoos and you were Japanese, you were in the Yakuza. Yeah, yeah, I don't think you're a, like, yeah, that's, I was in the same way. Like, I don't think you were allowed to, uh, otherwise you're asking for trouble. If you showed up with like a fucking, like a tattoo of like the 96 Bulls uh, <laughs> championship trophy and stuff. <laughs> well, also like the tattoos I was looking at, they kind of just look like, like tattoos it's not it's not like a like you know if you go to like a biker gang and you get a one percenter tattoo or something like that they're yeah. like hey take that off but these guys are like is that a fucking koi fish yeah on your goddamn <laughs> arm yeah yeah motherfucker those incubus lyrics <laughs> <laughs> come here let me talk to you outside <laughs> okay here's a little quick overview yakuza overview and history let me actually mark that can i mark that yeah cool the English equivalent for the word Yakuza is gangster and does not refer to only one specific family of the Yakuza. It's like saying the gang or the mafia. Currently estimated to have over 28,000 members. At, Jesus. Yeah. That's not even good. In the 60s, they had 200,000. What What are you running into normally for, like, gangs, like, sizes and stuff? You, you get the sizes on gangs normally, like, for the other ones? Like, if you were to look at the... You know, that's a great question. Like, like uh, what, what would... How many, like, active... Crips are there in America or like I haven't done Crips and we're going to do uh, a gang coming up that will be a little better. I've been doing a lot more crime organizations. OK. And they tend to, to have quite a lot of people, especially when you do stuff like the mafia mm-hmm. or stuff like that. 
But I, w- I would be more concerned. I think, like, personally, I'm more afraid of, like, Latin gangs than any other thing. Just, like, um, just because they seem super ruthless. But I also hear the Yakuza are pretty fucking ruthless. You know what, man? I'm going to go with you on that one and say that the Latin gangs are way worse than the Yakuza from oh, the really? things I'm hearing. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, 28,000 is still pretty good, I guess. I mean, that's a good party. That's a good, I mean, what, 200,000 in the 60s? That's like a 28,000, that's a party like you would see in 90s, like coming of age teen movies. That's how many people are at those 90s parties, you know? It's about 28,000. <laughs> and then two cops come and everyone's yeah. like, fuck! Oh, shit, shit, Trail! shit. <laughs> cops show up, they're like, we're here to break up this Yakuza party. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right so they went from twenty eight thousand. now there used to be two hundred thousand. that's a pretty that's not doing well Mm-mm. i feel like the yakuza buzz is wearing off wearing off you know <laughs> it's kind of like yo-yo fans at one time yo-yo <laughs> king of toys but then lincoln logs came uh-huh. along bam now yeah. only autistic kids play with yo-yos yeah and, and still in that way like it's like but if you saw someone really good with a yo-yo you still know he's dangerous <laughs> <laughs> you know, like if you saw a Yakuza or a kid really good with yo-yos, you're like, all right, but he's he could kill me. Yeah, it's two dark alleys. One, yeah. there's a Yakuza guy, uh-huh. purple hair, dragon tattoo. Other mm-hmm. one, kid with eyes a little too far yeah, apart, yeah, two yeah. Uh-huh. yo-yos. Haven't seen you blink in a while, kid. <laughs> Did he eat mud uh-huh. with those double yo's? Like a Yakuza like hanging you, but then also like the kid with the yo-yo doing the hangman <laughs> with his yo-yo. <laughs> he's like one hour is wonky. <laughs> so they... I mean, it's really hard to say how much money they earn because it's an illegal organization. But the FBI estimates that they own or earn billions of dollars annually, which for only 28,000 members. That's a lot. That's good. good money. That's, money. That's good money. Oh, man. They have a rigid structure and codes of conduct where loyalty and respect are considered a way of life. Considered to have several unconventional practices, including yabutsume. Yubu- mm-hmm. Yubitsumi. Yubi, Yubitsumi. Yubitsumi. Sorry. Yeah. A lot of these other ones I have met uh, phonetically done, but I forgot that one. Mm-hmm. Yubitsumi, or amputation of the little finger as in a form of apology or traditional punishment because of how difficult it makes it for the amputee to hold a sword. Fuck. Pretty fucked up if you're in the 1500s. Can't yeah. wield a sword. So sad. But today, I'd say given the option, cutting my little finger off would be my first choice. Yeah. I would maybe think that or ring toe. That's what I, yeah. It's you like, know? yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, don't take my pinky t- finger. What will I ever do? Not having the ability to drink fancy tea. <laughs> Next, it's going to be my pinky toe. And how will I ever wear a toe wing? It seems a little counterproductive, too, to be like, we're getting, like, you're in the gang, but you fucked up. So now uh, we're cutting off your finger so that you're less able to help us in a fight. <laughs> Smart. Like yeah. this guy's ideas. <laughs> like it. It's like, why don't you give them an extra toe? Yeah. You, yeah. Cut, you should cut other people's fingers uh-huh. off, add them to your you gang. attach it. More swords and more now fingers. Now you got to carry multiple swords. Now Two swords, f- one hand. Then the rings, mm-hmm. the budget for mm-hmm. rings. Their origins can be traced back to the 1500s to what are known as the Kabuki Mono, or gangs of samurai. Often peacetime samurai or men from samurai families were known to rob people along with other violent, unsociable behaviors. Mm-hmm. It is said that they would cut a person down just to chest the sharpness of a new blade. Uh, they would often wear very colorful clothing and have uncommon styled haircuts and facial hair. I feel like that was on accident and they tried to own it. <laughs> Bad haircut yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that they were like, yeah, 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 let me get a shitty haircut so that... Everyone knows I'll kill them. Yeah. <laughs> During the 1600s, these groups began to work in peddling stolen and illicit goods and bakuto. So bakuto is going to be one of the things that really these guys make most of their money from. Bakuto is uh, where gamblers and outcasts that became powerful through gambling outfits that they ran, often known for violence. Sometimes they were hired by local governments to win back workers' earnings in exchange for a percentage. Elaborate tattooing was introduced in the 1700s into the bakuto culture. Bakuto are credited for coining the term Yakuza for themselves. Yakuza is a homonym for losing hand in a card game. What? Yeah. Whoa. The name itself ca- comes from a game called Oicho Kabu, in which Yakuza is the worst hand that can be dealt. Bakudo groups eventually merged with other Yakuza crime families to diversify in the late 1800s. Even back then, 
Diversifying. Diversify your bonds, baby. Mm-hmm. Dogecoin. Mm-hmm. That's what they should have mm-hmm. got in early. Mm-hmm. So pretty much they have the same exact origins of the mafia, using gambling to make money and violence to secure that they get their debts. I do think it's a fun name, though, that Yakuza means you lost in the game. Nick, what would your gang's name be like this? Like, what name would your game be that also doubles as a game? You know, you hear about those killers on the 23rd Street? Those Yahtzee boys aren't to be trusted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh... Yeah, like, uh, oh, here comes Nick and the backgammon bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who shot my dad. All yeah. I know is he screamed Uno and ran down the street. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just like a bunch of uh, a bunch of guys that, like, kill everyone in your house, and they go, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> do I know who robbed me? God damn, I do. It was those cocksucker shoots and ladders. <laughs> yeah, they escaped on, a, on, they escaped on slides. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He went all the way to the oh, beginning. So uh-huh. you find the beginning, and maybe you'll find shoots. We just created, like, the worst 90s Batman villains. <laughs> <laughs> from the Batman the Hasbro, show. The, yeah. Hasbro, the Hasbros. Uh-huh. Ooh, the Hasbros. Ooh, the Hasbros. That's, That's pretty good. good. Uh-huh. Like, I think they made these up just to sell toys. I yeah, don't know, I know that this is part of canon, <laughs> these guys, the Hasbros. The Hasbros. Generally, Yakuza groups are also involved with protection rackets, real estate, banking, and loan sharking. So uh, I do find with these guys a lot different than the other criminal organizations, and it could be because they're from the fucking 1500s. Mm-hmm. But Mafia is very old. They, they do a lot of uh, normal shit. Like, not necessarily illegal, but they go around it in an illegal way, which is exactly what we're about to say right here, which is what I want to tell you earlier. Known to use a form of corporate blackmail known as Sokaya, they do this by buying enough shares of a company to get a seat at the table during shareholders' meetings. After doing this, they'll find out any dirt they can on other members and threaten to reveal that information unless they're giving money or power. Oh, shit. Yeah. Due to Japan's rich honor culture, this tactic is generally extremely effective. However, in the mid-1980s, companies started having their shareholder meetings on the same day, so Yakuza representatives couldn't be everywhere at once. What I mean there is, like, Nestle, Hasbro, Nintendo, Apple, they all had all their fucking meetings. Everyone came together to have their meetings on the same day in different parts of town Mm -hmm. so that the Yakuza couldn't be everywhere. Whoa. That is that is weird that they've like weaponized gossip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a pretty good idea. Yeah, yeah, I remember that shit in high school, man. Very effective. <laughs> Very For sure, effective. Just I don't because I don't even know if that's really illegal. I mean, I guess it's extortion, but it's like a small form of being illegal. I've never really understood the difference between extortion and blackmail. Like I've like I. It's kind of like affect and effect for me, where I don't ever correct someone if they tell me it's one way. You know, like I think a, extortion is normally like uh, you do violence on someone like you have to do that. Like if I'm extorting you, you have to pay me money every month or I'm going to break into your car. Whereas blackmail oh. is I have this file on you uh-huh. and you need to give me money every month or I'm going to tell everybody it's in this file. Oh, OK. But I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But they're both a continuing relationship then. Yeah. They're both okay. a long con. OK. So I do feel like this thing only work in, works in Japan. Like, could you imagine it here in, in America? Like, where people don't give a shit about their exactly, crappy messages. or their reputations. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Like, oh, so, Mr. Fury, we're here. You might be voting against the rest of the members. But what if I told you, <laughs> we know you like to do drugs and eat ass. What would you do then, Mr. Fury? <laughs> I'd be like, wait till that fine-ass receptionist comes back in here and tell the news. <laughs> uh, I'm one step ahead of you, sir. I already sleep in a dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't care. I'm the devil. <laughs> Some Yakuza known to also be into human trafficking and drug trafficking while others are Strictly against it, in Japan, Yakuza are semi-legitimate organizations, often having public headquarters near police stations. That'd be so funny to do that. Oh, yes, by the Yakuza. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. There's a Yakuza, and then there's a library <laughs> just right by. <laughs> you make a left, there it is. Make a left at the Wiener Snitchel or right mm-hmm. at the Yakuza, mm-hmm. and then you go downstairs to the mm-hmm. police and... Walk fast past the Yakuza, I will yeah. say that. But faster past the Wiener Snitchel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Found around the world, but centrally located in Japan and other Southeast Asian countries. In the U.S., they're especially active in Hawaii, but are also known to be active in major cities like L.A., Chicago, and New York. We'll do one more here before we break it down. Some groups are designated as Boryo Kudan, which means that they are particularly... in Boryo Kudans. ...are a particularly harmful and violent group. These guys are often hired out by the more traditional Yakuza organizations... These guys are like the fucking Marine Corps of Yakuza. Mm-hmm. Jeez. 
it is scary with gangs that, like, there you rarely hear about, uh, like the the improvement of the like reconnaissance division of gangs. Like, it's like the improvements are always just like we're even more brutal. It's like Jesus. <laughs> like, no, nobody here is getting smarter. Everyone here is just getting more ruthless. Dude, how I used to I used to run with this crew of guys that were a little bit shady. I was just kind of an out. Like I always say, they were kind of a gang. Where and I was like a moon. I was like on the outside. I wasn't mm-hmm. doing a lot of stuff they're mm-hmm. doing, but mm-hmm. I dealt with them quite a lot. And they had this one guy who was cool, but he, oh, he had these weird eyes, man. And he was in the mm-hmm. military for a long time and special forces. And they would like send him into like these drug houses to just like rob everybody. And he would do it all fucking scary style. Yeah, that's that stuff is super fucking intense to me. Yeah. I mean. But it makes sense. I mean, uh, we talked about this uh, on a couple weeks ago. Osil Guillen, the guy who created Los Zetas in uh, Mexico. There's people probably getting sick of me burping in a microphone, but mm-hmm. I got to drink when I do this. Um, hey, man, but this is the show, man. This is the show, the show. So the world's on drugs. Mm-hmm. Um, he, so what he did is America, to fight the cartels, went into Mexico, trained a secret Mexican force, gave them all of our tr- training, all of our info all of our tech not not all of our technology but a bunch of weapons and guns and then those guys work for a little while and then oseal came in was like hey how much you guys getting paid i'll give you 10 times that to come work for me Mm -hmm. and then he had this whole group called losetas come work for him and uh they're fucking wreaking havoc they're like the ones that are like cutting people's heads off and hanging them from buildings do you do you remember um when you had a different show and we watched those two guys get beheaded was that the one at the bottom of the at the comedy store? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? It's funny to me. This is a little off topic, but like I see sometimes like on TikTok the still of that video and people being like, this is the worst video you'll ever see on the Internet. It's fucking horrifying. And it always makes me think of you. And it's a great memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember you saw some weird pornos, too. With Dude, like bananas. Yeah. yeah. Bananas and butts. That's my favorite picture of us is us reacting to bananas and butts. <laughs> But um, but yeah, but I always think like, oh, like, oh, that's that video of those guys getting their heads cut off. And you know what? I love Steve. <laughs> what is that guy? This guy's like, <laughs> I wonder what yeah. he's doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there are four of the biggest, largest syndicates of Yakuza. Okay, but what it is is they kind of then break down, almost like the Crips. There's like a large Crips, and there's a 17th Street Crips, 16th Street Crips, mm-hmm. Hoover Street, stuff like that. The biggest and most dominant is the Yamaguchi Gumi. It's the largest Yakuza family founded in 1950. And uh, the year 2020, it's a, about has 9,000 members. Um, we're going to talk a lot about them later. The next biggest one is the Sumiyoshi Kai, the second largest, founded in 1958. It has an estimated of 4,500 members, known as a federation of smaller groups, resulting in a looser chain of command, rivals with the Yamaguchi, Yamaguchi Gumi, often revo- resulting in assassinations in neighboring Territory. So pretty much what happens is uh, the Yamaguchi Gumi are the big guys. They keep picking on all these little guys. The little guys end up joining together to come into the Sumiyoshi Kai, and that's how they form the second biggest one. But they're not as like interwoven as the Yamaguchi because they're multiple people rather than just one organization. Do you? I don't know if you l- research this, but what's the ratio of like? swords being used modern day by yakuza do you know well from what i'm reading i think it's pretty hard to get and use guns in japan Uh uh-huh uh-huh so i do think there's a lot of knives and i do think there is a lot of that stuff but there are shootings but there's definitely a lot more stabbings kind of like in england you know like i had a buddy in england like they don't have guns so they end up bottling each other quite a lot oh shit (laughs) <laughs> like a bottling uh-huh. is like a thing that happens uh-huh. when you go out you know you don't die but you have like my buddy here's actually a really funny story uh oh, his last name's whitney i we did all these shows with him in panama and he's from england and he got famous and well infamous in england he's a comedian funny guy that his heckler was coming was shitting on him for a whole hour he was doing god it was, damn. it was like one of these single hours sometimes as a comedian you get paid to go to a comedy club and you do an hour you have an opener who does 20 the other guys it's 10 But sometimes you get paid and you're just the only person. So this one guy heckled him nonstop for an hour. As he's getting off stage, the guy who's heckling him goes up to him and starts pointing in his face real close. And my buddy is probably, I don't know, maybe your height, Uh but he's thick. He's like fucking, he's like a guy who works out kettleweights. 
Oh, you know what I mean? They're yeah, just like yeah, thicker, yeah, 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 I feel yeah. like. More tree than man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, They're stumpy. Yeah, yeah. And the guy's here. He's looking at him. And the guy's like, oh, my fuck. And he just goes, bam, and headbutts the guy. He just crushes his nose. And explodes his face. Fuck, dude. Fuck. And then uh-huh. he got uh, and He goes, like, you're lucky I didn't have a gun because <laughs> I would have. What if he was like, because I would have hit you in the face with my gun? <laughs> so I would have taken the gun, thrown it away, yeah, and then yeah. hit you again with my I would have put it right up on my forehead, and I would have <laughs> smashed it into your nose. <laughs> <laughs> the Inagawa Kai, third largest, founded in 1941, has about 3,400 members. Not much info on them. These guys, these guys are going to come up a couple more times. The Kobe Yamaguchi Gumi, mm-hmm. the Kobe. fourth, yeah, the fourth largest, founded nineteen or in twenty fifteen, when they broke away from the Yamaguchi Gumi and formed an alliance with other powerful factions, including the Ta- Takumi Gu- Gumi and the Kayuyu Kai. It's like imagine that, dude. You got your gang, oldest gang in America, and some other fucker decides to split off, and instead of changing their name, they just add Kobe. In front of it, <laughs> it's like that sounds way cooler. Imagine if you were American, a part of the Crips, and one day you're like, "I quit, and I'm joining the Shaquille O'Neal Crips." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, "Bro, come on, man. you can't do nothing else." <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal Crips. <laughs> what do you think are some other names that could be made better in this vein? Oh man, dude, you caught me off guard with that one. Um, I don't. Know, I was just, I was just thinking, like, uh, like, yeah, like. Maybe not necessarily in the way of the NBA, but just if they kept adding like the cooler than you Crips or like the bet, yeah. like they just kept slightly like better than the Crips that Nick is in. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when you're a kid, you're like, you're like, you know, you're I, I'm on hundred and everyone's like a hundred and one. Yeah. Because yeah, hundred and two. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean you started a gang called everyone but Nick? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our gang. Nick sucks balls. Yeah, yeah. Um, we will be repeating mm-hmm. the slogan every day. Mm-hmm. All right. The sixth. Yamaguchi Gumi. The six comes from their currently being under power of the six Kumicho boss in their history. Kumicho is the godfather. So now the gang calls themselves the six Yamaguchi Gumi. Each Kumicho has a protege, number two, underboss called Wakagashira. After the third Kumicho, Tauka, they started selecting their Kumichos from a council of eight top level bosses within the family network. Formed by the Harikichi Yamaguchi in 1950, mainly consisting of dock workers and operated as a labor union in Kobe, the place, not the basketball player, mm-hmm. involved with strike breaking. It was then handed over to the son Noboru Yamaguchi upon his death in 1925 and then to Noboru's protege Kazao Tauka in 1946. Tauka had been previously in prison from 1937 to 1943 for murder. Damn, it motherfucker only did six years for murder. <laughs> God damn. I feel like at that point, you like you're trying to apply for a job, you wouldn't tell them you killed a guy, like you, you know, like yeah. they're like, what, what was this six year gap? Like, I was just working on me. <laughs> <laughs> Take a break. Mm-hmm. I mean, but also you were probably. I mean, what was the <clears throat> lifespan of someone in the forties? Probably like forty, maybe. Yeah, I can't imagine it was that. So six years might have been a life this, sentence, and that's also yeah, that's also during World War Two. Oh yeah, you're right. So it's like it, nobody's killing it back then in terms of a lot of people are killing it. Oh yeah, yeah, but no, <laughs> nobody's having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like. So after taking control at thir- soot on the faces <laughs> back then. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Japan was at a great place either. Taking control at the age of 33 was under Tauka that the Yamaguchi Gumi became more than just a local group with only a few dozen members. Kazao Tauka, Kazao Tauka, I said that twice, is known worldwide as the Japanese Godfather. He had grown up an orphan in Kobe. He learned his lifelong nickname, the Bear, after a signature attack of clawing at opponents' what eyes the fuck? while he was a young street fighter. Oh, man, that's where the game comes from. Yeah. Based on that guy. So my only thing is a uh, little soft. I don't mm-hmm. know if clawing at eyes is uh, really bear-like. Mm-hmm. I would have gone with Kauzo, the irritated house cat, yeah, Tauka, yeah. <laughs> or Kauzo, middle girl school yeah, yeah. fighter. Kauzo, the cat you petted a little too long. <laughs> <laughs> All his tummies, kitty tummies, Tauza. Yeah. It's like, hey, you ever hear about Steve the Wrecking Ball Fury? Holy shit, did he get that name because he crushes his opponents? No, he uh, uses his foot as a wrecking ball as he kicks other men in the testicles. <laughs> uh, Nut Kicker Jones was already taken. <laughs> Tauka created networks of subsidiary families to the Yamaguchi Gumi, electing Wagagashira as known as underbosses. So the Wagagashira are like uh, captains, if it was in Mafia. Okay. Like uh, Pussy and uh, 
What are the other guys in The Sopranos? Like all of his little gang. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Made men. They're essentially Yeah, made yeah. Men. Jimmy the Foots out yeah. there. Those yeah, the guys. Foots, the Chins, <laughs> mm-hmm, the mm-hmm, Necks. Mm-hmm. Uh, f- they form several alliances with other cl- clans while remaining heavily suspicious of others, often doing turf wars. Talco survived a 1978 assassination attempt when he was shot in the back of the neck while dancing the limbo at a nightclub in Kyoto. Wait a minute. He was dancing the limbo, got shot, shot in the back. Of the- was the guy under him that shot him in the That's back? exactly of the- what I uh-huh. think. It's uh-huh. like well, his, his alleged tackle was found dead a couple weeks later. Uh huh. Wow, though, could you think of a more terrible way to die? Maybe if you were stabbed to death doing the Macarena. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You mean no one in this conga line saw me <laughs> getting shot? Saw who shot me? You think you would have been able to see the guy being that you're upside down looking behind yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was a guy just under him that was like, oh, not low enough. And <laughs> just shot him in the back of the neck. I just love that the most powerful gangster in Yakuza so far scratches people's eyes when he fights and loves the limbo. <laughs> it's like, hey, do you know why they call him Kimbo Slice? No, no, not that. Uh, he squirts orange slices into his enemy's mm-hmm. eyes when he mm-hmm. fights mm-hmm. and then drinks an ice-cold orange soda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's when you find out, like, the uh, the uh, the hardest dude in the gang's, like, really into Cisco. <laughs> <laughs> that's your favorite musical artist? Cisco? He's not even around. <laughs> Tauka died of a heart attack in 1981. His wife, Fukimu, reportedly filled in as a gang's primary leader until Masahisa... Takanaka was chosen in 1984. Shortly after Takanaka took over, he was assassinated while at a girlfriend's home in January 27th, 1985 by the Ichiwakai. This sparked the Kama. This sparked the Yama Ichi War. More details on that to come. Yoshinori Watatambe was elected Kumicho in 1989 and retired in 2005, which is generally unheard of as most bosses don't retire. They just die. Mm-hmm. Current Kumicho Shinobu Tsukasa was elected in 2005 and has re- resumed expansion, often observing, absorbing neighboring clans. Tsukasa was imprisoned in 2005 for an illegal gun possession and released in 2011. Have, have you run? I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but like, ha, have, interrupt have you run into a lot of gangs that? Because I am very thrown by how much of this has been like. IBM buying up smaller companies like it, it's like it, in my head and this is ignorant I suppose but like they come in and they just kill everyone and take over the neighbor that's kind of what I assume happens this is like uh very peaceful takeovers if it's a continually just absorbing gangs I understand that it comes from an in- intimidation yeah I think it comes from more an intimidation I think it more goes you join us or we kill you yeah 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 I, I yeah I get that it just still just seems like I mean, I suppose this is just a spreadsheet we're looking at, and it's they probably were killing up a lot of them before, and they were like, look, there's yes. we killed seven dudes, there's three of you left. Are you yes. going to join us kind of a but thing? But it also, man, I'm looking up the, I was looking up the numbers and stuff. They're not putting up like, you know, it's like the mafia. I don't know if the mafia was murdering hundreds of thousands of people a year. It's not like That's the fair. cartel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah like yeah, the yeah. cartel are killing 40,000 people a year. They have like, <clears throat> the Seal Gideon guy, he has this one place... I don't know if it was Villa Cruz. I'd have to think back to the episode where there's a layer of soot ash covering this whole uh, farm. Mm-hmm. And there's about five kind of outhouses. And in each one is a uh, oven that they just burn dead people. Jesus. So Jesus. these guys, you know, I don't know, man. I've seen a lot of the I think Asia keeps a fucking tight lid on shit. I think pretty on everything on everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Japan's so small. I think they keep a tight lid on it. But also the Yakuza have gone into like bigger company and stuff and then china they got a fucking i mean china they're the gangsters shit you know what i mean yeah yeah they're the gangsters in every fucking yeah life. so um illegal gun possession in 1995 they launched a large-scale relief effort for the kobe earthquake victims helping with food and other supplies they also provided relief in 2011 by opening its offices to the public and so in 1995 they launched a large-scale relief effort for the kobe earthquake victims helping with food and other supplies. They also provided relief in 2011 by opening its offices to the public and sending supplies to area affected by the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami. So that's the background information. Up next, we're going to talk about some wars and some crimes and some assassinations. But before that, a little word from our sponsors. All right, let's pause this. Bam. Wow, what a great ad read you guys have heard a thousand times. But we're here. We're going to have some fun. 
We're talking about the Ichiwakai, the Takanaka assassination, and the Yamaichi War. When Tauka died, a popular choice to take over was Wakagashira Kenichi Yamamoto. Oh, man, that guy. That guy. I mean, that was pretty hard to say, and I think mm -hmm. I nailed it. Who at the mm -hmm. time was imprisoned. Before he could get out, Kenichi Yamamoto died of liver disease in 1982. Then, Takanaka was elected in 1984. A top lieutenant named Hiroshi Yamamoto, Kenichi's brother, defected from Yamaguchi Gumi, forming the Ichiwa Kai. He recruited anywhere from four to 10,000 members by the beginning of 1985. And I got to say, damn, that's a popular dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a guy that the whole time everyone's like, man, I wish he would start a gang. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't even get 15 people to come to a comedy show I'm giving away free tickets yeah, to. Uh -huh. And this guy had people joining a yeah. criminal organization. This guy's out here like, will you kill a man for me? <laughs> <laughs> what if you gave out flyers? Yeah. Hey, we're looking for new gang members. Do you like uh -huh. killing people, selling drugs? Start a new gang, Ichikai wa Yahweh. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, what? All right. <laughs> All right, you had me, Ichikai wa Yahweh. <laughs> On January 27, 1985, the Ichiwakai sent hitmen to Takanaka's mistress' home in Osaka. The attack resulted in the killing of Takanaka, one of his underbosses, and one of the other Yamagachi Gumi members. This sparked a bloody nationwide war. Over the next four years, an estimated 220 gun battles took place, killing upwards of 36 gangsters. That's a lot of misses. That's a lot of misses. That's a lot of misses on that. I think maybe because guns aren't prevalent there, they're not very good at yeah, shooting yeah. them. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's not even a guy. That's like a guy. What's the percentages of that? One sixth? Mm -hmm. That's terrible. I can't imagine they're like out there with like single shot derringers. You know, they're out there with like some pretty. I got to imagine assault rifles. That's I don't a know, lot of misses. That, dude, some countries. I and, I and some countries you can't get that shit. Like mm -hmm. that shit is super hard. Like England's it's hard to get fucking assault rifles and shit like that. You can't even really get guns. Gun laws in Japan. Yeah, you just look it up and it just says no. Oh, no. Currently, Japanese citizens are allowed to own regular rifles, shotguns, handguns, but just might need to demonstrate a legitimate need. So, I was wrong. These guys are just terrible at shooting fucking guns. Uh -huh. Can you imagine, like, you try to shoot them and then you miss? You're like, I was a warning. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be We're back even? here. We're good, right? Uh-huh. Okay. No one died. Yeah, I'm not going to miss next time. I'm not going to miss next time. <laughs> Eventually, Yamaguchi Gumi won. They suffered losses mm -hmm. that weakened their structure. Many members also arrested in the ensuing police crackdowns. Mm -hmm. Eventually, Yamaguchi uh, started, he started instituting practice. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, we're not game ready. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he Colts cartered it. Uh -huh. Look, I'm running out of money for bullets. <laughs> okay? If we're going to take down the whole Yakuza... We got to start cutting some corners, guys. He just goes like a teacher. 220 gun by <laughs> gun battles divided by 38 gangsters means we're not up to par. Mm -hmm. Some remaining members of the Ichiwakai went to the police for protection. However, many were allowed to rejoin the Yamagachi Gumi. So that's nice. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Come home, he said. Come home. Come, come to on Papa. home. You know, if I try to shoot you, you got a pretty small, mm -hmm. pretty large chance you're gonna yeah, make yeah. it. Just stand eight feet from me; <laughs> I'll probably miss. <laughs> By the end of 1989, the Ichiwakai were completely dismantled, with Hiroshi Yamamoto forced to retire, and it was retired. They didn't mm -hmm. kill him. Yeah, like Jordan with the Wizards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He just he came. It's like this is. I mean, it's that honor thing, you know. Japanese people just fucking love honor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I do think that that must be what's playing into the idea that I mean, what I'm gathering that they're not quite as brutal as some of the other gangs, where it's like yeah, it, there seems to be a code that that like a, a, a vein throughout their entire history of this like code of honor. And probably, I mean, I mean, the the government's probably cracking down on, but like, if our gangs were like this, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I kind of am too, because it's like. I got an iPhone in my pocket. I don't really like what those guys do. Yeah, yeah Those yeah. guys are fucking gangsters, <laughs> and I fucking deal with them. Yeah, and it's like they're not really killing that many people. Mm -hmm. They're just being creepy and doing mm -hmm. weird shit, and it's like, all right, I mean, I guess the human trafficking is pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty nasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I will say, not that I'd ever would, but I've thought about, like, man, I wish someone would kill that guy. Like, I fucking yes. hate that guy. And these Yakuza guys kind of sound like, what if we did? What if we did kill that fucking... Weird guy that's always on the bus with you on Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> what if we just took him out for you, Nick? I'm like, we can do man, that. I'm not. Yeah. I don't support that, but I'm also I'm mad. 
Give me a flyer. I'll see what I'll do. I'll call you guys back. All right. We're coming to the last leg. Notable Yakuza crimes and kills, killings. Juzo Itami, beloved Japanese actor turned filmmaker, was heavily critical of the Yakuza. On May 22, 1992, he was attacked by five members. Instead of killing him, they slashed his face and shoulders. Fuck. On December 20th, 1997, five years later, Itami, then 64, was found dead after jumping eight stories from the roof of a building that he lived and worked from. It was ruled a suicide. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh (laughs) Apparently, a magazine was going to publish an article detailing that he had an affair with a younger actress and that a suicide note was found written by him claiming his innocence. Source. That sentence didn't really make sense Mm -hmm. to me. Innocent of what? The suicide? Or fucking this actress? I would assume, like... Maybe him saying, I'm not going to kill myself. Like, it, it may, yeah. Like, it makes sense to me that he would be like, I don't, I'm not fucking doing anything. I think what happened is he just was, like, writing a note that said, I didn't have sex with this girl, but also they're just going to kill me. Yeah. So, now you know that. Okay. Sources have reported that Tadamasa Goto was responsible for the knife attack and suicide, forcing him to jump at gunpoint. I would probably guess that as well. Mm-hmm. Tadada, Tadamasa Goto remains uncharged and was part of the Yamaguchi Gumi. Would you rather jump off a roof and kill yourself or let him shoot you? I feel like I'd be like, just shoot me. I would OD. I would just get a shit ton of heroin and OD. I would go. I mean that's that's fine, but I mean it sounds like he was in a moment here. Oh, okay. He like he sounds it. like they were like they probably forced him out onto the roof and they gave him that choice. Well, my choice. Well, the, the question would be: Are they going to shoot me in the head or are they going to shoot me in the leg and then push me off? Oh fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah it's a yeah. one shot kill. Kill me now. Because the problem: every time someone wants to jump, you're gonna have a regret. Like you're not gonna jump like swan diving and happy. You're gonna jump and then adrenaline's gonna be like, this was a bad fucking mm-hmm. decision. But it, but it also feels as though that they are, they got him here because they're attacking his image, right? That's the, yes. the, the younger actress thing. They, so they're probably not going to shoot him in the leg, yeah. Right? They're gonna, they want it to make it look like he's like shaming himself into death. Yeah, it's probably shame based thing. So it's like I would be like, you're not going to shoot me in the leg. You're gonna, you're maybe you'll, uh, you'll toss me off this roof, maybe, to, and then lie. But I don't, I'm like a little bit of like, are you even going to shoot me? If you're trying to tarnish my legacy a little also, bit. Also, I've heard the way you guys shoot. Not uh-huh. very good. Uh huh. I'll probably I'll be okay. I'll take my chances. <laughs> All 16 of you. Take a shot at me right now. <laughs> God damn it. Like, uh-huh. They shoot like, like stormtroopers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This was the inspiration for the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> All these like, he's just vaguely moving out of the way. <laughs> he's just kind of like, he's doing feng shui, mm-hmm. just like mm-hmm. slow. Mm-hmm. Tokyo, 1995. Juntaro Suzuki, the senior executive of Fuji Photo Film Company, as well as five other business executives, were murdered in what was suspected to be in response to Japan's cracking down on organized crime and businesses that dealt with them. Suzuki himself was reportedly hacked to death in his driveway by a katana. I'll bring it home with the swords. Good Mm -hmm. stuff there. Mm -hmm. Goddamn, a sword would hurt. Dude, yeah, I definitely think maybe jump off the roof over that. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about it right now. Worst way to die, being drugged behind a car or a horse. I will say a horse. I was going to say, yeah, drugged by a horse. Would be the bad. Mm -hmm. Hanging, probably fire would be pretty bad. Fire fire or drowning would both be pretty bad because those are both kind of suffocation type of feelings, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like with fire, unless someone directly sets you on fire, like people who die in building fires die because of smoke inhalation. They don't die because they're burned up. I'm picturing uh, Joan of Arc on a spire. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like real Game of Thronesy kind of death. Screaming at the people. Yeah. Cursing them as a. Uh huh. I'm not a witch. I'm not a witch. (laughs) I I would say, though, that, like. Getting killed with a katana, though, feels like ultimately you're on a T-shirt that high schoolers wear, <laughs> right? Like it's like people are gonna think you're cool. After a certain well, point. also though, like katana death could be cool. You know, it's like a, you know, uh-huh. t- but uh-huh. hack to death. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like by the same guy who can't shoot right. He's, he's just kind of like it's like an axe. He's just very. It's like it's like. Are you beating up raw chicken? What are you doing? <laughs> Kill him. <laughs> I feel like Katana's a stabby kind of. You stab. Oh, my whole thing. I always wanted, whenever I watched Game of Thrones, was to hit someone with a 
axe here. Uh huh. And just and but Boom. split them right. Oh, like, that would I be feel cool. Like I never thought about that. I just thought about. <laughs> I re- I remember like in the uh, specific in the very beginning of Game of Thrones. This is now the Game of Thrones podcast. Yeah, <laughs> like we're gonna a, switch back. Um, a guy cuts the whole horse's head off with an axe. The mountain. He mm-hmm. like cuts like, and, but it's just one move and cuts a whole horse's fucking whole head off and stuff. I feel like with a katana sword, in my mind, it's always diagonal across your whole torso. Yeah, you can't imagine you're alive for more than a few seconds. That's a lot of blood. Oh, see, I think it's the opposite. I feel like any katana, they go, and then you're like nothing happened, and then you split apart. Something. Oh yeah, yeah, like it's the same like, like like a candle where the candle's still lit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like this is fine. Everything's good. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 ha ha! You missed. Yeah, and you yeah, sliding blah, off. Blah, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Police arrest a suspect later that year with connections to 20 other attacks on executives in 1995 alone. I mean, who needed the 220 other attacks? This guy was putting out people. One guy? Get it, brother. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 1997. Watananambe was in charge of the Yamaguchi Gumi, while the second in command was Masuri Takumi. It was presumed that Watatambe would step down and Takumi would take over. However, on August 28, 1997, at a hotel cafe in Kobe, four men in suits and baseball hats approached Takumi and opened fire, killing him as well as a bystander. The gunmen were identified as members of the Nakanakai, a sub-gang within the Yamaguchi Gumi, who were angry that Takumi made peace with one of their rivals. This led to the Nakanakai being forced out of the Yamaguchi Gumi. The gunmen, Hari, Toshi Zatsu was arrested in ni- in tw- 2013 in June and confessed to the double murder. Once again, you know, listen, I always thoroughly enjoyed bad guys. Anytime I was, I, I, I loved Cobra. I love for GI Joe guys. I was a Cobra guy. I was always always bad guys. My whole thing in life, and you know, I was a little bit of a shithead in a while. I think if you're playing the game. I don't get mad when people die. Like when drug dealers get shot by other drug dealers or gang members, I, I don't care. So I think I think y- y- you bought the ticket to that ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I've never um, been one. Like I accept crime as an inevitability. I accept gangs as a, a part of the like part of the um, the food chain of mm-hmm. the modern world, right? But it's like. I don't have a bleeding heart for them in that way, where it's like, I agree. It's just like, yeah, that's how your story goes, though. Yeah. You know? And it, you signed up for that story. I mean, were you pressed into it due to, like, systematic racism, all this yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. But also, this is your thing. So that's why, I mean, it seems like these guys normally only kill each other, but that guy did have a bystander. But mm-hmm. Yeah, I always feel like uh, gang stats of all kinds, like, really inflate other stats. Would it be like, you talk about, like, the, the idea of, like, gun violence in America... And it puts fear into the hearts of like uh, families living in the suburbs. It's like, well, they're talking about like gangs in South Chicago killing other gangs in South Chicago. Yeah. Like, it's just it, it's uh this is stuff that like they've created. And yeah, by hook or by crook and whatever you believe the 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 background of it is, they're killing each other. You know, it's like it's a well, game being played right there on the sh- that street. And what I found, and especially in America, people re- the cops really don't try to fuck with these guys super hard uh-uh. until they start killing normal people. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, all right, f- coming to the end here. This one's actually been banging out pretty quick. Good job, buddy. February 5th, 2007, Tokyo, 10 a.m. Two men in motorcycle helmets approached the limo of a sen- senior member of the Sumiyoshi Kai, a rival Yakuza, and the guy inside was Ryoichi Seguria. They shot him three times through the window, killing him. The men are later identified as belonging to the Kukusuya Kai, who was affiliated with Yamaguchi Gumi. The killing was over a disputed area of turf that the group fought to control. Retaliation has been assumed and no one was ever arrested for the connection to the murder. And to be honest, man, I'm finding that Yamaguchi Gumi is doing everything. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a uh, um he's like the uh, Well, that's the gang's name, Yamaguchi Gumi. That's the main one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For a second I got confused. Yeah. I was thinking of that one guy who's like everyone liked. Yeah, they're all these names. They're mm. kind of hard to get through. These are a lot of names that are like uh really I've been drinking, they're pressing your boy. I'm not oh, gonna lie. They're pressing me saying them. I have mm-hmm. to like it's hard to get. I've been I've been doing pretty good phonetically, but mm-hmm. it, it it was not easy. All right, we got a couple more here. This next one is uh one of the more important ones, actually. March two thousand six Tokyo, Kazuoki Nazasaki, a real estate consultant, was stabbed to death on the street 
No immediate arrests are made. Four years later, in December 2010, four members of the Gotogumi clan are arrested in connection to the murder. The family of the Nozakaya, of the family of Nozaki, sued the Gomogumi and settled for 1.4 million in 20. 20- 12. At the time of the settlement, Tadamasa Goto, the man who ran the Gotogumi Yakuza clan, had been in the Buddhist priesthood for three years, even publishing a best selling autobiography titled Habakaren Agata. Pardon me, but. So, so essentially. Sounds like a book like Seinfeld would write. <laughs> yeah, pardon me, but. Here's a list of stories. So, this is what. There's a couple things about this story that makes uh, that's important. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this Tadamasa Goto guy. But since these these yakuzas are actual organizations, they can be sued. Really? So that's why that's the family of Nozakai was able to sue the Gotugumi and they for one point four million because you can't sell the Crips. Mm-hmm. You can't sue the Crips. I mean, <clears throat> mm-hmm. and then this Tadamasa Goto guy, to me. Seems like he ran and pretended he was a Buddhist priest for a long time so that no one would fuck with him. Uh-huh. So this we're going to go into a bit, little bit there about Tadamasa Goto. And then there was like a guy that showed up in like a jumpsuit and a wig and he looked like a cameraman. And he was like, uh, Tadamasa Go? Uh, and he's like, yeah. And he's like, you just been served. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, damn, damn, I really I thought I was getting out of the priesthood. <laughs> it was Seth Rogen from Pineapple yeah, Express. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plays like cool, like this ACDC starts playing as he walks away. <laughs> Black and black. <laughs> <laughs> All those that long ass stairs that go to a Buddhist temple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're tired halfway down. <laughs> Tadamasa Goto. Like he set up a tent. You watch the sun going down. He takes it, goes to sleep. Off, finishes the stairs tomorrow. <laughs> this is crazy. This is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy, man. <laughs> Tadamasa Goto, born September 16, 1943, is a supposedly retired yakuza. We're gonna do a little history on this Tadamasa guy. The U.S. Treasury Department put him on a watch list in 2015 when he donated. $100,000 to UCLA. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be like, I'm going to watch this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Wait for a second. Well, what he did is he jumped the liver donor list. Oh, and got, shit. And he got a transplant. He jumped ahead 198 people. Um, Dang. He is considered to be bankrolling the Kobe Yamaguchi Gumi, which split from the Yamaguchi Gumi, Japan's largest crime family, in a long a long time ago. We've already talked about them. He was the founding member of the and the head of the Goto Gumi. Um, da, 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 da. He's been convicted nine times and was a prominent yakuza at one point, the most powerful crime boss in Tokyo. He even d- was dubbed the John Gotti of Japan. Goto was once claimed to have the largest shareholder. And he pretty much ran Japan Airlines. Mm-hmm. He had the, Really? Yeah, he had the biggest Whoa. shares in that one. This one kind of bothered, which uh, kind of freaked me out a, bit, a little bit. He had been barred from entering the United States for most of his life until 2001 when he got a special visa from the FBI. Oh, fuck. How the fuck did he get that visa? I also, I've noticed this every time. I mean, it, I mean, every, I mean, unless you're an idiot, you know this. You can get to a level in crime where the government starts working with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or they like they feel they have no choice but to. I don't like, think it's no choice, man. I think it's they're these pencil pushing fucking bitches that go. I okay. I need to get someone in trouble. So instead of going and instead of going after Steve Fury. I can go after maybe Nick and get Nick to turn on Steve Fury, mm-hmm. and I'll just keep helping Nick into my bosses. It looks like I got <clears throat> Steve Fury, mm-hmm. wherein actually I just uh, allowed you to become far worse. Yeah, I think, I mean, we definitely are a country that likes to give assault rifles to, like, rebels. Yes, and then it, and it never works. Yeah, we keep yeah, doing yeah, it. Yeah, I, um, I mean, I don't know if I, maybe I forgot my point, but, like, it, that is crazy, especially 2001, like, 9-11? <laughs> like, that is true. Like, like <laughs> back, right when they made it so that, like, I couldn't go anywhere, <laughs> they let this guy back in. And what did he have, man? And it doesn't seem like, listen, I've been, I've dealt with shady people a long time. I've never met a Yakuza guy. Yeah, but, yeah. And if I have, I didn't know it. And I know. think I would. They had crazy haircuts and a bunch of weird tattoos. Well, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. I haven't met too many Japanese gangsters, but, you know, probably not the circles I hang in. I, I feel like uh, back home... Like, especially in Stockton, there was, like, a lot of East Asians. 
So yeah, there's like Hmong and but, Thai though. And like Japanese. Cambodians. Yeah, but Cambodian. I just mean like I was like I feel like I've met a lot of Asian gangsters, but I don't know if I've ever met one in a suit. That's what we did last like week. All black suit. Well, that's what we did last week. Was Kun Sa, who uh, was the he's a opium warlord in the Golden Triangle, which is Myanmar, Thailand, and uh, Laos. So all the guys where we grew up. The sh- the mm-hmm. Opium warlord, like he's like the warlord of a guy that makes you sleep on a giant pillow. <laughs> no, like every he, opium dens, like it's like the opium dens did look fun. Like if they never got you in trouble, if you just uh-huh. like smoked opium and sat on a pillow, yeah, yeah, until you died. But, but no, he uh, he actually controlled eighty percent of the world supply of heroin <laughs> for like twenty years. Jesus, and people couldn't get him because he's in this fucking tiny ass or this jungle. Because mm-hmm. he lived in a tiny house in the woods. <laughs> he lived in a tiny house, a little shack. <laughs> um. The, it's weird that like I understand that yakuza is a greater word for gangs. Period. So I'm sure, and obviously we read a lot about a, a lot of infighting within the country. But it's weird that there's not like the United States has been successfully invaded by several gangs, right? Yes. And so it's like weird that there's not a story of another gang invading. Like we keep talking about like Latin gangs. Like there's not a Latin king presence oh, that you don't funny. hear any stories about the yakuza having to deal with this or whatever. You know, it's weird that they. Uh, for as great of war as they fought since like the beginning of time, it's a very insular war. It's not. There's not a whole lot of outsiders. Outsiders are guys from the same country. Yeah, we need to start exporting our gangs. I would love that. I would, I would love, love that, that if someone else had to deal with them. Yeah, too. let's just take them. Start sending them to fucking Belgium, mm-hmm. Sweden. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like if dude, straight up, if every John Claude Van Damme movie has ever taught me anything. He'll handle the gangs. He'll find them. You, you send them all to Belgium. <laughs> yeah. He's going to triple spin kick them. <laughs> Somehow in a month, yeah. it's going to kill every one of them. He'll beat everybody um, into jail. And straight up, the leader of the gang will fight him one-on-one in a fight. <laughs> Surrounded by all of his friends. Yeah, yeah. No shenanigans. He'll take off his shirt. He'll be more buff than you thought. And then he'll fucking get his ass beat by Van Dam. The gang will surrender after that. And that's how mm-hmm. it, it'll end. Mm-hmm. Be wary, though, Van Dam, of the sand being thrown. I'm just going to say that. Yeah, I will, will that. I will say that. I will say that. And pay attention, because I know there's going to be a scene where you get laid, Van Dam. I've <laughs> seen those movies. Pay attention to who's around watching, you know? The Don Shido War. In 2006, a group of 500 men from Dojin Kai broke off to form a game called Kaiushu Sido Kai. Mm-hmm. When they split, they sided with the Yamaguchi Gumi, which seems to be the right thing to do. The bloody <laughs> rival of the Dojin Kai. This war led. This war lasted about seven years. The peak of the war was from August 2007, when the leaders of the Dojin Kai were killed. Following this, over 45 violent incidents occurred, including bombings, grenade tossing. <laughs> High that sp- doesn't. That does not imply success. <laughs> Just I saying, grenade tossing. tossing. I thought the uh-huh. same thing. It's like tossings. Mm-hmm. Maybe throwing would yeah, be better. Yeah. That's like saying an attempted game of catch. <laughs> <laughs> you toss it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hot potato. Hot potato grenades. High speed car shootouts and the murder of at least fourteen people. The war came to an end on June 11, 2013, when both members of the gangs entered a police station and publicly announced it was over resulting in the Kaiyushi Sidokai to a dissolve. They publicly apologize for the problems they have caused, and I've been trying to see if they got in trouble, but it doesn't seem like they did. I mean, I don't speak or read Japanese, but everything in English seems like they just, like, kind of like a kid fucking up in school. You know, he's like, Dad, uh-huh. listen, I want to come here. I got a D in math. You don't have to punish me. Take away my PlayStation for a week, <laughs> and I'll be fine. Mm-hmm. That was like they they like they both walked in and they were they were like, "Hey, just so you know, I'm the leader of this gang. He's the leader of that gang. We squashed it. Uh, we're done. We're done." And then and then like the the chief of police is like, "You break it up, you do. <laughs> Good job, fellas." <laughs> All right, we are down to our last two killings for the Yakuza. April seventeenth. That's today. Right? Yeah, it is today. Is today the 17th? 2007. Iko Ito, the three... Ter- oh, this one's a good one. This one's really good. It is the 17th. Today is the... Yeah, that's pretty crazy. The anniversary. Th- anniversary. That's why I, I knew this was podcast was going to be... Iko Ito, the three-term mayor of Nagasaki, was returning to his office when he was approached and followed by Tetsuya Shiro, a high-ranking member of the Sushishin Kai gang and known as an associate of guess who? Yamaguchi Gumi! Oh, dude. Oh, boy, Gumi's. Gumi's out there. Gumi bears. 
When he caught up with the mare, Tetsuya shot Ichō twice in the back, and although he tried to run, he was quickly tackled by Ito's wife. <laughs> oh man. And a f- That's a ride or die right there. And an aide. Tatsuya confessed to the murder when the police arrive. Authorities have yet to grasp on the motive. Qu- Damn. Imagine letting his wife and aide tackle you. Uh-huh. Have you ever uh-huh. seen an assistant or a politician's wife? I could fuck up 10 Nancy Reagans and her associates. Well, yeah. not not, a, not Michelle Obama. She could probably throw hands. No, no. She got them, she got them shoulders. My God. People talk about her arms, but I feel like her shoulder. That's where that punch is going to come from. Can you imagine? But the aide, though? An aide. There's no way that aide's not named something like Mabel. <laughs> You know, like, it's a, the, even the Japanese guys are Hunter <laughs> Western Chester. <laughs> Some elite as fuck. Then you, uh, I would lie. I'd be like, no, there was a big ass dude in there that tackled me. <laughs> <laughs> a woman? No, I wasn't a uh, woman. Uh, Two uh, giants uh, came uh, out of the sky. <laughs> Something about Thor's came hammer. Parachutes. <laughs> parachutes. I don't know. I think it was Americans. And then they got me. And then I fought them and I killed them. And then they disappeared. And then I the demons. Six came. green berets, man. <laughs> They're lying to you about it. I've never seen that bitch in my life. Yeah, old lady that had backup from another old lady. <laughs> what do I look like? A man who misses 220 shots uh-huh. and only kills 36 people? A man that gets beat up by the Golden Girls? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here! I need her to leave before I leave this building, though. <laughs> please, I'd like an escort. Please. I'd like an escort, please. November 2015, Tatsuyuka Hishida, leader of the Ayokai, a second tier Yamaguchi Gumi affiliate, was found bludgeoned to death in his house. His that, head, oh man, I feel like that's a super scary way to die. Let me finish this one and we're going to talk uh, okay, about okay. it. Okay, okay. His head had been beaten with a blunt object and his hands and feet were tied together. Police believe it was a split between the Yamaguchi Gumi and the Kobe Gumi. Yeah. Um. <sighs> I kind of though, man. When you get in a fight, you, you don't. Your face doesn't hurt that bad. I feel like your body does turn off. Oh, that's a fair point. That like you be, think adrenaline kicks in? Yeah, you know, kind of like your face. Oh man, just that would to me beating someone to death, bludgeoning, would be the hardest way to kill someone. Uh, yeah, I I could never. Like I can't imagine ever like trying to do that. I also just um. Because I feel like suffocating people is the scariest way to die normally. Like, But even if you're drowning, if you wanted to kill yourself real quick or you're drowning, I feel like you could just inhale air. Because that's what happens is your body finally gasps and you just inhale air, I mean, water, water. into your lungs. Yeah, that kills you. So it's like you could probably off yourself faster if you knew there was no way out. But just getting bludgeoned to death, you at some point you're kind of hoping they hit you hard enough to finish it, right? Like it's like, like you got it's I, Honestly, if that's me, I'm like, I hope you do it in one shot. Yeah, I'd be talking shit. Yeah. Oh, you better you better get something bigger than that, bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you get uh, hey, I got uh-huh. a baseball bat with a knife stuck to it. Yeah, if you yeah, want yeah. to shove that in my fucking head. <laughs> that seems fucking brutal. Especially to be tied up. Ugh. No thanks. Yeah, I'm gonna pass on that. I'm gonna pass on that. Mm-hmm. The guy's like, hey, I'm gonna bludgeon you. You're like, I don't really think that's for me. Pass. Mm-hmm. Thanks, so thanks mm-hmm. for coming out, Kobe Yamaguchi. Mm-hmm. Nick Aragon, thanks for coming on, buddy. Dude, this has been a blast. That was fun. We had yeah. a good time. This was a fun little one. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Nick, uh, t- talk about your podcast. I've been on it. It's a lot of fun. Oh, Tell dude. people where they can follow you. Uh, the podcast on Instagram is called Fuck This Place. You can follow it. Get it wherever you get podcasts, Spotify, uh, iTunes, yada, yada, yada. It's called Fuck This Place, the podcast about terrible jobs. We talk to uh, comedians, actors, just artists of all kinds about the worst jobs that they've worked in their life in the pursuit of their dreams. So come hang out with us. It's a great podcast. Check out Nick. Thanks for watching, everybody. Um, that's all for right now. Peace. Peace.